Roman, thanks for uh, spending some time with me here today. I got a couple of questions I want to ask you for the uh, hockey news. The first question I want to ask you is about the business of hockey in Russia. Uh, the, the sport is growing really well over here. Uh, I've seen myself what's going on with the Big Red Machine. Um, the success on the ice is obvious, but I don't want to talk too much about on the ice. I want to talk about off the ice. What are you, what are you doing now to, to grow the business of hockey in Russia? We are trying to get uh, more fans involved you know, with the hockey. We are working on that every day. And of course, we'll, once the team is succeeding, like our national team is succeeding, we get more people to watch our game on TV and, and we have more fans. So we are opening stores like the Red Machine. Uh, it's a brand that we also give license to other people, uh, the Red Machine license. Uh, maybe at the forum you saw like even uh, the mandarin, uh, the mandarin over there, like red machine um, fruits. You know we have that, and we have uh, different uh, projects with the red machine, like the red machine national training program, which has a mobile phone application, video coaching. It's like a national wide uh, training program for the kids. Uh, we just launched it um, last month uh, with with all the age groups, and. Uh, it, it's really important that uh, finally now in Russia there's one program for everybody because before that uh, all the Russian coaches and then uh, the parents they of course uh, checked uh, from the internet so they were using programs from uh, Sweden or Finland or US or Canada and, uh, the, and because of that uh, it, we didn't have like unified system so now we have a unified system and uh, the kids love it, the kids love the red machine, they buy the clothes, so we have a clothing line, the red machine clothing line, we have an online store and so we are thinking to also maybe make a production for hockey equipment under the red machine brand in Russia, we are discussing that and then uh, working with other partners. So I think the, the red machine brand is something that unites everybody in Russia, they're proud of this brand. Especially the, after the Olympic win in the Pyeongchang, uh, you know, everybody is, uh, kind of feels that the, the red machine is back. Uh, so the, the the country won its first Olympic gold medal since 1992. So it it has a lot of um, like this winning uh, philosophy, winning culture behind it. And it, they, in Russia, there's not other brand uh, like that right now. So it's like a first like big national brand that people uh, like and, and 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 it's it's actually the, the, the clothing line of itself that it's, it's becoming more like we can compare it to like Abercrombie because it's really comfortable it's uh, uh, like a casual use it's not only hockey fans buy it so a lot of uh, people buy it and we want that this brand is not only for for the hockey fans it's, it's, it's first of all for hockey fans but then it's for everybody so we want to actually develop this brand and to become a big uh, clothing brand in, in Russia. So obviously, yeah, that makes a lot of sense that if you have a, a strong brand like the, the, the Red Machine and you, it, it appeals to not just the hockey people, but it appeals to other people as a brand to wear that product in the streets, that drives additional revenue. Yes, it's, uh, uh, I think the potential of this brand is huge. But of course, it's uh, a lot of investment we need to do. And we started this brand in 2015. Uh, we registered this brand. And uh, since then, first the reaction of the, just the fans were just like, why do we have to name our national team the Red Machine again? Uh, and then we just used examples uh, from uh, Canada. People call Canadian uh, national team the Leafs. Uh, or the US, US, USA team, Team USA, and uh, the, the Swedes are the three crowns, and the Finns are the lions, you know. So that's why I think for the kids and for the young generation, uh, it's important to have a brand uh, behind the, the, the official national team so that they can, they can relate to. And then they said that, okay, but you still didn't win anything. Uh, it's only the, the Soviet, uh, Soviet Red Machine has won something in hockey, if you, if you say about Olympic Games. And this was the truth, but we said that this is where we aim. So this is the, the winning philosophy and the example of, of winning games uh, from the past. So we have to relate to that because there was actually no culture. Let's say when the, the, the players came to national team before that, 
uh, they didn't, especially if these guys lived in the US for a long time or Canada, where they play different junior leagues or they play NHL, they come back, they didn't maybe live in Russia for a long time. So they, they kind of um, maybe sometimes lose this identity uh, of themselves and they have to relate to something. And then after we started to <coughs> use this brand, the players, they kind of started to relate and then they, they started to know more about the culture of, the, of Russia. Some, sometimes these hockey guys, you know, they, they go to US, they go to Canada, they, they maybe sometimes lose the connection uh, to Russia and then they should always, uh, they're not always educated enough. So we try to educate them. So education is a big part of uh, our philosophy now uh, when we are um, doing this national program also because we want that uh, the players also get education. Uh, and it's uh, on the government level we are discussing that how we should do it even more because I know that you know other countries like in Canada, USA, and uh, Finland and Sweden, the big hockey countries. Uh, it has been already part of hockey for a long time, since 20, 30 years. When you have to have the education, also, not only play hockey, but in Russia there was a different system. You either play hockey as a professional or you study. So you couldn't do both. So that's why you get a lot of players that uh, after they finish their career, they really cannot do anything. And they, for the society, they they have uh, no, they don't have a role for the society, and uh, they get lost. They get lost um, sometimes. And uh, I think that, that way we should, uh, we should uh, first of all prepare people for life. Uh, so that they can uh, be, if, even if they don't play professional hockey, they can be lawyers or, or business people. And, and that's that's the difference, uh, what we're making uh, right now. We want that uh, <coughs> professional sport in hockey so that uh, they're more educated. And uh, Russia history is a big part of that. So the Red Machine is also part as a history of Russia. So we can relate to it as a history. And because without history, there's no future. So it's, it's also our future. And uh, we got involved a lot of um, ex-players, uh, legends. Uh, they are working on our program. We have uh, like uh, recently we start to work with Igor Larionov. Uh, he's a big part of our team now. He lives now back in Russia, and uh, he uh, we do a lot of lecture seminars around Russia, different regions. We we present this program all around Russia now. And then we finalize it in Sochi uh, with the educational center. It's called Sirius, where we have most talented kids. Uh, and there they have also great infrastructure for sports. So there we finalized our program. And we, like, just last, like three weeks ago, we finalized it and uh, presented it to everybody. And now uh, we start to integrate the program. So this is the, the theory part is done. Of course, it will be adjusting or we'll be modifying it every day because it's it's online and it's, uh, it's uh, using the more the modern technolo technology like application mobile coaching online coaching so that uh, that's how we that's how we uh, uh, try to always improve our system uh, always improve or every, every every day improve our program so I think <clears throat> this is the main uh, 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 target and then uh, apart from that of course uh, uh, making the hockey equipment production in Russia trying to maybe find partners uh, all around the world uh, working with some Canadian companies uh, you know and then uh, trying to just develop hockey uh, so we have more we need more rings so we don't have enough rings now we need more rings so we have this program where we want to build 400 more rings we are only 100,000 um, registered players which is not enough you know in Canada you have 600,000 for 50 million uh, 35 million 35 million, million. Yeah, 35 million we have 140 million only 100,000 so that's really not enough <clears throat> that's why we need to get stronger we need to get stronger on that uh, so we need to have more rings um, better coaching better qualified coaches 
and of course more players. We need more players. Well, 400 more rinks is a big investment. That's a, that would be a big investment, obviously, financially. That's something that you see the government um, taking a leading role in the building of more ice rinks over the next decade. Do you see that happening? Yeah, we have already discussed this with the government, uh, but the, now we have confirmation for 50 rinks oh. from the government all around Russia. But then we have to work more on it. So if in the next uh, five years, I think we are aiming to build 400 rinks. But, but, if, e but even 50 rinks is a big commitment. I mean, there, that's a lot of rinks, and that's a big commitment. And it's a, not only a commitment of uh, energy, but funds and financing. Yeah. By, by, by strategy, the strategy you've done about the, the, the Red Machine and consolidating all of the energy and enthusiasm around that brand, do you sort of see other brands and other consumer products coming to the table to uh, say, well, wow, this is happening, we want to be a part of it as well, uh, like uh, other sponsors? Are there other sponsors that are coming to the table now as well? Yeah, we signed just recently um, a beer company, Baltica, uh, for the Federation, and we have a um, big company, uh, Nordnickel, which is our sponsor. Uh, so we actually we see that through this um, <clears throat> making uh, like the Russian national team younger, um, uh, more appealing to younger generation. So like the, the generation that uh, usually just play video games, <clears throat> but we kind of through this red machine because we have mobile phone application. <clears throat> then we're working a lot in the social media. So we have kind of this uh, modern approach. Uh, where we see that uh, because of that we get also other uh, companies coming uh, and they, they, they see that how we are developing uh, because we, if you check other sports in Russia now even even football a little bit different I image you know it's a little bit for older the hockey is a little bit younger now uh, like younger because of all that what we're doing like the clothing line and the, how we approach things and, but I see that we can be even more um, we are still a little bit too conservative uh, that's where we are fighting for that and maybe also looking for employees that uh, are um, not so conservative in this because uh, there's, there's a thin line that uh, being conservative or just uh, doing something which is uh, not good at all you know <clears throat> so we the one that uh, our, our you know our image is uh, should be still uh, you know really um, uh, proper for sports mm -hmm. so it should be a healthy lifestyle and it should be uh, but at the same time uh, we want to be uh, like in, in trend uh, in trend and so that uh, the young generation the young people and, and we need to have more more fans more fans so I noticed that like today we're at the World Hockey Forum here in Moscow and um, obviously the Russian Ice Hockey Federation is very, um, very supportive and they're a sponsor of the World Hockey Forum. And obviously the World Hockey Forum has the word world in it. So it seems to me that uh, the Russian Ice Hockey Federation is supporting not only the growth of hockey within its borders, but by participating in the World Hockey Forum, you're encouraging the growth of hockey outside of Russia. Is this a, is this a something that is on your uh, uh, on your mind all the time? <clears throat> yeah, uh, 100%. Uh, uh, through all my life, I've been traveling. I've been uh, played hockey myself uh, since I was a kid. I grew, I grew up in Finland, so I know, know the culture there. I, I've traveled many, many times to Canada. I played some tournaments when I was younger in the US. And I see that when the hockey is developing in the world, so we have a good example, like even the uh, national uh, hockey development program in the US, where they have the, the team that plays uh, in the league, the youth hockey league. And, and then <clears throat> it's one approach. There's another approach, the Canadian approach. Then there's a Finnish approach where they have the education, they have the the, 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 the facilities there, and uh, this is what I saw when I was younger. And I see that in that way, when hockey is developing, mm -hmm. and now we have China, which is a new market for everybody, and I've been also part in that development. And I see the problem there that there's no uh, 
nobody to drive it. Uh, there's no driver to for the development of hockey in China. There's no, no one, one person to take it further. And especially with the potential in China, one billion three hundred million people. Can you imagine if, if every every person in China bought hockey stick or a hockey Crazy. skates? Yeah. It's a huge, huge amount of money that can be good for hockey development. But now we have a reality. This is like the theory, but in, in reality we have eight eight thousand people just playing hockey. This is. 1.3 billion market, but only 8,000 people are playing. So something is not right there. But we see it at the For Hockey Forum. This is a platform where hockey develops all around the world. And it, and it, for sure, if hockey was not developing all around the world, hockey would not be developing in Russia. So when we started uh, to work in Russian Ice Hockey Federation, Russia Hockey, how we call it after that, uh, this is how we start to call Russia. Uh, Russia Hockey only when we came before it was just officially Russian Ice Hockey Federation. So we started to work in Russia Hockey. Uh, and uh, we, of course, we, it's, good, it's really good for us that we had this example of the countries that did such a good job with the hockey development. Of course, we checked uh, Canadian example, you know, example from the US, and of course, Finland and Sweden. Uh, and we see that other countries are coming, like Denmark, Switzerland, you know, we have uh, Novi, Norway, we have, we have a lot of, so hockey is developing around the world. So of course this World Hockey Farm Forum, is, of course we want to develop Russian hockey, but we also are interested to develop world hockey. Because uh, when world hockey is developing, the more people have uh, you know, playing hockey, then uh, the more fans we have around the world, then uh, it's a potentially also income for us, so we want that uh, in the future we can go and play different countries and um, of course uh, we will, we, as a hockey family, we will be, we will be working on uh, developing hockey in the world. You know, I walked through the conference and uh, I noticed a lot of uh, booths from companies that are involved in the hockey world, hockey business world, that are coming there. CCM has, has a booth there and there's other businesses that obviously were attracted to the World Hockey Forum because the content and the communication that's going on there. This is just as now year, what, three or four of the World Hockey Forum? This fourth. Is, this is the fourth year. Fourth and, year. Um, so this is something that's growing every year. Uh, I was here last year, and uh, this year is bigger than last year. Is this something that the Russian Ice Hockey Federation is committed to over the long haul, to continue doing this, to continue growing the game? Yeah, I think when we first did this forum, uh, of course, this was the first time, and uh, we didn't have so many companies there. We kind of uh, just took us took our partners so they could see the product, the concept, the concept, so everybody could see the concept. So it's like an investment for the future forums. And now we see this year that uh, we have a lot of interest from companies that pay or already pay to be a participant in the forum. Big companies that are um, building rings, uh, companies that have hockey equipment. Um, uh, so any company that has something to do with hockey. Uh, so it's also for us, of course, we are proud that we have uh, CCM there represented, we have a sport nutrition companies, big sport nutrition companies, we have a, um, you know, uh, analytics companies there, uh, because we work also a lot of in digital, uh, we want to develop the digital te technology, but te the technology should be our friend and not our enemy, so we, we should not use, I mean, the use technology, we have to know the technology, but uh, we, we think that there's al always, uh, hockey is a kind of sport that, uh, it's all about the people. So even though we use a lot of technology, you can never be like a money ball where you just use the technology and then you make your decisions based on that technology. Because I don't believe in that. And I, see, I know it's not going to work like that. You know, uh, a lot of people who know you know you as a hockey guy. Uh, you've been playing, like you said, you've been playing since you were a kid. Uh, you and I, I, we've played on at least three or four teams together over the years. Um, you love the game, obviously. It, every time uh, I mention the word hockey, your eyes get big and you get excited about it. It's just like me. Um, so, you know, a lot of people see you as a businessman, but I, 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 desc I would describe you as a hockey business guy. Uh, you love the sport, but you love the, the whole environment, which is business, 
the the grassroots, the the leagues, whether it's the KHL or any professional leagues. You're you you're the kind of guy that would go to any game, whether it's a <laughs> KHL game, an NHL game, a junior game, or an eight year old uh, kids game at the local rink. For the future, your future, you're a young man. You've got a lot of head, a lot of uh, a lot ahead of you. Is this something that you want to do for the rest of your life? Is this is this in your blood? Is this part of your DNA? Yeah, it's uh, for sure. Uh, the, I think the best example, not only to say that, but uh, like let's say my son, four years old, uh, I put him on on skates since he was two and a half. But also like a game, right? so it's like we just play, we just play, and now he he starts to skate already, and he he's it's it's it's, it's amazing experience. We can use your knowledge to give it to your son that just starts to play, and how he sometimes doesn't want to go to the practice, and how he goes to the practice, and how the coaches work with the kids, because this is the most difficult thing to work with a small kid. Because if he doesn't want to go, he he will not he will you cannot do much to do to. To, to, to make him uh, go and he should never push him to go he should have the feeling to go he should be a hockey guy also and uh, my, my daughter is uh, also a figure skater and she skates uh, professionally also since I put her on skates when she was three and uh, we, we spend a lot of time uh, on the ring uh, just even my work is on the ring but also my free time <laughs> I spend on the ring and, uh, and this is when I enjoy it you know, <laughs> the most the most and then uh, it's just like the life, uh, you, uh, hockey unites everybody, hockey unites people and I see that without sport now in, in today's society, it's, um, I think you have to be healthy to do something, you have to do sport uh, and, and hockey uh, gives you the opportunity to be healthy, to, it's, a, it's a clever man's game also, it's like chess on ice uh, because you, you, you really, we know that it's uh, it's uh, really a sport that where you need to really think a lot and it, it develops you, your, uh, your, 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 your thinking also and and I think, yeah, for sure, well, hockey is in my DNA uh, this is how I started to play. I, I just went uh, on the rink outside and I just started to skate and I just skated then 10 hours a day and nobody could get me out of the rink uh, since, since from the ice <laughs> since then. I had some breaks, you know. <laughs> Uh, when I had to uh, go to get my university degree in, in UK, I, I got my university. I, I, my, my, my mother was actually she was not a big fan of hockey. You know, she uh, was against she was against hockey. So I had a big battle uh, all the time uh, to go to the games and I had to fight for this. I had to fight for hockey. So I had to get good grades to be able to uh, go to the games and play. <laughs> so this was the deal with my mother. The other way around. So she was not really pushing me to play. And then. Uh, so basically, and my uh, also the I have a background. That my dad is also, he's a, my dad is a coach. His education, he's a coach, and he was a professional athlete. He was a professional judo athlete all his life. So since I was three years old, first I started to work out uh, with my dad in the gym, uh, in the judo gym uh, on, on tatami, and uh, this is how I got into sports. Since so I've been all my life. Basically, I was born. Like in a, in a gym, <laughs> you're you're sort of born to do this. <laughs> yeah, because all my life I just saw. But this is uh, like I think this is very good thing. This the sport gives you character, and this is the main thing. Okay, be character to be a team player. So the team play is what teaches you to be a team player. And then uh, every win what you get in life, uh, it's the team win. It's a team win, and this is how you get wins in in, in hockey. Yeah. Even though whoever you have in your team, if it's not the team play, you can never win anything. And, and this is how, what applies to life also. You know, and also, um, I remember growing up in Canada in 1972. I was 12 years old, and I watched the Canada Cup you know, with the Russians. I'd never seen, I'd never seen a Russian up until that time. Um, uh, I'd never. I, all I got, all I got, was what I was told by the Canadian media about Russians and. For me, as a young man, young boy, I saw these Russian players show up in Canada, and they were the most skilled skaters and passers I'd ever seen. I thought, up until then, that I saw great hockey players, but when they showed up, it was a whole different world for me. The way they would pass the puck and skate. 
they would skate like circles around everybody. And I don't know if you remember, but uh, Phil Esposito, uh, after game four, he was being interviewed and he was crying and he was upset that the fans in Vancouver were booing <laughs> Team Canada. You know, because they didn't see the, the effort that the, the Russians were just completely dominating the, the series. That was my first introduction to uh, Russian hockey. But what really, I look back now, and what really stood out for me was that Russian hockey and Canadian hockey coming together brought two people together. You know, this was not a political situation. This was a sport situation. Yeah. And it, it really you brought people from across the world together and they would and the conversation like started over hockey and then the whole world changed for me it opened up so I, my personal experience is that hockey can open doors around the world and and it can it, it crosses borders very easily uh, it doesn't matter where you're from it doesn't matter what your political viewpoints are if you're a hockey person and you're sitting across the table from another hockey person from another part of the world, you can get along. Is there a, is there a life lesson here for what the Russian Ice Hockey Federation is all about and what the Canadian team Hockey Canada and Hockey USA? I mean, their 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 original purpose, their main purpose, is to teach hockey. That's for sure. But because they're on the international stage, they have a, a more important purpose, which is to, to sort of bridge the, the world with sport. Do you, do you sort of see a bigger purpose for all of our federations around the world? 100%, uh, because when we have a hockey family, and when we had a problem um, with uh, going to Olympic Games in 2018, uh, we... Uh, ask the federations, the other federations, to support us with official letters that we are all hockey family. We are all hockey family, that we support each other. So no matter like our nationality is different, uh, we are all together because we have respect to each other. Because hockey unites everybody and, and Canada knows that if there is no Russian hockey team, uh, it's really, uh, since it's the culture since I was brought up since I think you were playing the Russia Canada, it was the best game. It's still the best game ever. It still is. It's the best. It's the best hockey game you can imagine. It's the best. No matter what people say, but for me, it's the best, and it will always be the best hockey game, Russia Canada. And the last World Championship, we almost got the final. We almost got the final. It didn't happen. Maybe next World Championship we have this. We have this final. It's it's, all. It's, it's all. Let's hope that uh, yes, uh, and then the, the all the federations then back then uh, they supported us with the official letters, and uh, there was no politics involved in that. And just this is how we work, and uh, we are open. Let's see. Uh, now we had a discussion, first session. We had a NHL representative, USA hockey representative, Canada hockey representative. So they all coming to the game tonight. Uh, we have a game Russia Sweden tonight. So we are like a family, we work like a family, and we have respect, they respect, we respect them, and we develop hockey, and the, re the rest is uh, what's going on there. Uh, of course, we want that everything will uh, be solved, and everything will be good for everybody, but we are actually really happy that, uh, because if the Federation, even the USA Hockey Federation, Canada Hockey Federation, at this time didn't support us the way they supported, this was a sign for the uh, for International Hockey Federation that we are all together, mm -hmm. that Russia is not isolated. No. Russia is like a brother, mm -hmm. they're like, we are like brothers, like a family. Mm -hmm. So this was uh, a sign that uh, this is we are much bigger than just just about hockey. It's, it's, we are, and, and, and of course, I think through hockey we can uh, unite people. I think we can solve many, many problems. Uh, I think this is the, also the, one of the main points that uh, we are working on. Isn't it, isn't it really the higher purpose of sport is to bring people together? Yes, the higher purpose is to bring people together. You know, because it's not about uh, dropping a puck and playing a game. It's about bringing people together around the world. Like if we didn't play hockey, we would have never met with you. Uh, I, I, I would have never met you, <laughs> yeah. and I would have never had the opportunity to have you skate circles around me. Again. <laughs> uh, Roman, thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, I know our readers uh, want to get to know you better. And this is a great first conversation. We'll have many more, okay? Thank you. Thank you.